I'm Jim Ebden. I'm a live sound engineer. Welcome to this Sennheiser blog. I love the police and um, I love David Bowie. I loved ELO. Uh, I actually wrote a list of these down the other day and I can't remember them now, but uh, the Beatles, Sgt. Peppers, I mean, what a great album. And I, had to, I have two older brothers. So when they went to school, I put their record player, or when they, I got home from school, they were still out, I'd put, play their records on their record player. And it was those, and the Nice, and, and Emerson, Lake, and Palmer, and, um, and then the Sex Pistols, and the Clash. I mean, oh my God. I mean, I grew up at a great time, you know, when they, those, they came out, those punk bands, and it was just, you know, bands with angst and energy. It was amazing. I think uh, it, it was um, Motorhead, the Bomber Tour, the Hammersmith Odeon in London. And um, it just, and I went with my buddy, school friend Dave, and his mum took us. Uh, I had to borrow somebody's leather jacket to wear. And um, I stood in that room and I was just blown away with everything that was going on, the sound, the lights, just the, the, the vibe from the, from the audience. And I didn't know what it was, but I wanted to be a part of that. And I, 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 don't, I didn't know it was going to be sound, but I just wanted something to do with that show. Uh, I only do front of house. Okay. Um, I did a monitor gig once um, for Bonnie Raitt, who came to Europe and did a handful of promo shows to, uh, for you know um, a new uh, record she got. And um, I was asked to just go and do monitors and help out. And you know what? She had the best band ever. And I was expecting this nightmare of, you know, a monitor situation. And they were just the sweetest guys. No one really wanted much in their wedges. She didn't really want much. I'm like, what's all the fuss about? This is easy. It's a piece of cake. I think there's been maybe two or three catalysts in my life um, in three different stages. The first being that break of working in a recording studio. Um, and I happened to know somebody that knew somebody. Um, and that was just, that was probably it for me. This, that just set my path at 17 years old. That, that's what, I, you know, I've never really had a real job. In fact, I've never had a real job. It's, I've always been in the music business. And I suppose second catalysts, uh, you know, um, sadly that studio that I worked at went bankrupt and I was forced to go freelance. And I, and I tried the rounds of the London studios and... Um, was recording a record with a, an English rock band called Wishbone Ash, and they said, uh, you know, we've got a, a festival in Germany this weekend. Can you come and mix the sound? Sure, I can, yeah, piece of cake, you know. So you can imagine the fiasco that turned out, having been a trained studio engineer to suddenly being a live sound engineer, you know. My 20 minutes of sound check was taken up with the bass drum, and that was it, you know. So uh, that was a very quick learning <laughs> learning curve experience for me, but I got the buzz. I loved it, you know. It's fantastic. And then I suppose a third, a third one later, just getting the gigs that I wanted, you know, just being able to... Uh, you know, go for something, uh, you know, big name artist and, uh, and and get that gig and just, you know, be the, the A-list sound engineer. I suppose doing, a, you know, a show with Sting to playing to half a million people in, in Prague, in, in the square in Prague, was kind of wow, you know. And when you're at front of house and you're doing a show that big, you only see the 10,000 people in front of you, 5,000, 3,000 people in front of you, from the mixed tower to the stage. And then when you look round, and there's this sea of people that, I mean, you know, even to this day, you know, the, the bands I work with now, we play in stadiums, and, uh, and just looking around and having a look is, is, is mind-blowing, you know.